Hello, uh, my name is Maria Milikan and I'm pediatric endocrinologist working in Endocrine Research Center in Moscow, Russia. And our team have a special interest in uh, hypoglycemic disorders, including HI and um, different uh, variants of inborn errors of metabolism. And I'm very glad to have a possibility to share uh, results of our small study on idiopathic ketotic hypoglycemia. So as all of you know, uh, IKH is the most common cause of hypoglycemia in children, and the severity of symptoms and frequency of hypoglycemic episodes may vary among the patients. Um, and despite its high prevalence, the etiology of IKH is still unclear. Familial cases are often observed, suggesting a possible genetic basis of glucose homeostasis dysregulation. So uh, in our study, we aim to investigate the possible molecular mechanisms of idiopathic ketotic hypoglycemia. Uh, over the last three years, 117 children were referred to our hospital because of recurrent episodes of ketotic hypoglycemia. Uh, the investigations included measurements of serum biochemistry, lactate, acylcarnitine profile, uh, hormones such as cortisol, insulin, and pituitary hormones, all taken at times of uh, laboratory hypoglycemia less than three millimoles per liter. And based on this uh, initial results of the screening, uh, 21 children were diagnosed with hyperpituitarism and only five had some uh, biochemical abnormalities indicative for inborn errors of metabolism, which were subsequently confirmed by genetic testing. The rest 91 children, uh, which accounts for almost 80%, were diagnosed with idiopathic variant of ketotic hypoglycemia. Uh, and as the clinical picture, the median age of hypoglycemia onset in our group was two years. 16% of cases were born premature, and only 5% were small for gestational age. In 15% of cases, Neonatal jaundice was noticed, and more than a quarter of patients had neonatal hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemic episodes were rare in most of children and usually was triggered by prolonged fasting and infections. Majority of patients had mild hypoglycemic symptoms such as irritability, confusion, and dizziness. However, 26% presented with seizures and lethargy. In more than a half of cases, normal glycemia was possible to achieve with just regular frequent fits and in um, about 30% additional corn surge was needed. Uh, we were able to perform an um, additional genetic testing and an NGS panel analysis was performed in 57 of patients with suspected IKH. Uh, and it revealed pathogenic hemizygous variants in a gene called PHKA2 uh, in five children, uh, what is 7% of cases. And these mutations are leading to glycogen storage disease type 9. Additionally, 18 uh, patients were found to carry heterozygous pathogenic variants in different genes that are known for a number of inborn errors of metabolism with a autosomal recessive type of inheritance. And uh, to conclude, more than two thirds of children with ketotic hypoglycemia are diagnosed with idiopathic variant based on routine metabolic examination. Uh, whether the genetic testing helps to reveal mild forms of GSD. Regarding the heterozygous mutations in genes involved in glucose metabolism, additional studies needed to see if they might be a predisposing factor for IKH development. Uh, thank you, and I think that's all. And if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them.
Thank you so much, Maria, for this very important presentation. And now I welcome you to this Q&A. Hello, thank you very much for inviting me. You're welcome. And thank you for doing this very important study. And I now have some questions from the audience for you. First of all, I would like to ask you, what do you think the future will bring for the understanding of idiopathic ketotic hypoglycemia? Well, uh, hopefully <laughs> it should uh, bring us more information to know the, the causes and the real reasons because it's very uncomfortable to tell your patient or to have a child with um, a symptom which you know how it looks and how it goes but you don't know why it happens. So I think further genetic investigations should help us to understand Thank you, Maria. And that brings me to the next question. Do you feel that genetic testing would be beneficial in all children pre presenting with ketotic hypoglycemia? Uh, well, that, that's a, a difficult question. So far, you know, for example, in our hospital, we have a few um, panels of genes that we use uh, in cases of hypoglycemic disorders. But again, as, as you've seen, in most cases, we don't actually find anything. So um, what is about this particular gene uh, causing GSD type 9? I think it should be included in the protocol for the children. But in other cases, it should be with, with other genes. Uh, it should be, I think, individualized in, in patients. Thank you, Maria. And I have just a question from the Faroe Islands. And this is from Freya. She is asking, can we or when can we expect that there will be new type of GSD found and announced? Uh, well, uh, that's hard to say, to be honest. <laughs> I think it can happen at any time because... Um, we can see the development of technology and science every day. Um, well, uh, the, the, the main thing is that uh, it should bring us more to understanding of how to treat it. Uh, so if we know the, the particular reason for the disease, it should help us to develop the treatment for these patients. Yes. Perfect, Maria. Thank you so much for answering our question in this live Q&A. It was amazing to have you here and I hope that you will continue with the research into figuring out what idiopathic exotic hypoglycemia really is. So thank you very thank much. Thank you, Maria. Thank you.